Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So we will continue the discussion on combinatorics and uh, so in the we saw first that Pingala in his uh, Chanda Sutra started this uh, subject of uh, Rastara and he did this Prastara of the syllabic meters and then he talked about the other Pratyayas also the Nashta, Uddishta, Sankhya, Lagakriya. <coughs> then the same thing was repeated for the Moric meters or the Matra Vrittas <coughs> by Virahanka, Hemachandra and others. Now, parallelly uh, the same kind of discussion started in music also and uh, in some 11th, 12th century works there are some talks of uh, uh, this kind of prastara and combinatorics in music, but the, really the text in which uh, the entire subject appears almost in a completely finished and a perfect form is the very famous text Sangeeta Ratnakara of Sharangadeva. <coughs> So, Sharangadeva considers two different kinds of uh, combinatorial problems. One is prastara of uh, tanas of swaras. He also considers prastara of talas or the rhythms. <coughs> so, as you can see, both are going to be discussed somewhat extensively in this talk. In the end, I will make some remarks on the relation between <laughs> the idea of a prastara and theory of representation of numbers. Sharangadeva, <coughs> his uh, Sangeet Ratnakara is uh, one of the most famous treatises on music in India. It is said to be prior to the period when classical Indian music divided into the Carnatic and the Hindustani forms. So, it is a canonical text for both the streams. <coughs> he was a Kashmiri Brahmin by descent they I think uh, came to Devagiri uh, one or two generations earlier to him and uh, he was his father was in the Singhana, Yadava king Singhana's court. Uh, uh, Singhana is said to have ruled in Devagiri from 1210 to 1245. So, Sharangadeva's work should be around 1230, 1240. Sangeet Ratnakara is a complete treatise uh, like Bharata's Natya Shastra. The first chapter is uh, Swaradhyaya, next there is a Ragadhyaya, then uh, there is one on uh, compositions, then uh, we have a chapter on Tala and finally there is a chapter on Nartana. So, it is a complete treatise. The sections on Prastara is very small in the Swaradhyaya it is somewhere buried in the middle of the Swaradhyaya, but the section on Prastara is really very long in the Tala Adhyaya. There are two very famous commentaries, <coughs> one by Kalinatha and one by Simha Bhubala, both of around 14th century. I think Simha Bhubala was the contemporary of King Devaraya in Vijayanagar. So, we can <laughs> straight away enter into the discussion of what is Varaprastara. So, basically what the Sharangadeva is talking is again a mathematical problem uh, that is why it is not much discussed in music circles though this uh, section is an important section in uh, uh, Sharangadeva's book. So, you take any three swaras say Sariga. Now, you can render them in various different orders. So, in normal mathematical language they will be called permutations. So, Risaga, Gasari, etcetera. So, you have three swaras, they have a natural order between them and then there is permutation and so the number of permutation here is 3 factorial. So, the moment you add the fourth swara, 
the number of permutations will be 4 factorial, it will become 24 and like that up to Saptaswaras you can reach 5047 factorial. <coughs> now, as regards this 6, it does not matter, you can always identify them, but suppose I ask you to write down all possible permutation of Sarigamapa, those are called the Kuta Thanas. So, a phrase like Sarigamapa is called a Thana and rendering them in a different order than in the natural order is called a Kuta Thana and you need a prastara for all the Kuta Thanas, that is you need a listing of all these. So, if you have 5 Swaras, you have 120 permutations. So, if I ask you to write them down again, as I said the problem will be you would come maybe you will write 30, 40 and then you do not know whether the next one that you are writing has already been written down earlier or you has not been written down, you have to check. So, there has to be a rule by which you generate uh, all these prastaras. So, in mathematics this is called permutation generation today. So, this uh, fourth volume of uh, Knut's uh, art of computer programming is uh, devoted a section, two sections are devoted to permutation and combination generation to give algorithms and then study them and in fact, the oldest algorithm for permutation generation and the perfect one is due to Sharangadeva and this is the algorithm. Kramam yasya swaraha sthapya purva purva paradadha sachedupari tat purva parastupari vartinaha mula krama kramat prishthe shesha prastara idrisha. So, you start first with the swaras in natural order, sariga and you should end up with swaras in reverse order. So, that is the last row of the prastara. So, the prastara for this looks like this. So, what is the rule that Sharangadeva is giving to go from sariga to risaga <coughs> sagari gasari rigasa So, what is the rule by which Sharangadeva is saying you go from one row of this to the next row? <coughs> so, stated in words the rule is as follows. So, first row is write all the swaras in their natural order. Then starting from the left, identify the first swara which has at least one swara lower to the left. Below that is placed the highest of these lower swaras to the left, then the swaras in the right are brought down as they are. So, this part of prastara is similar in every prastara rule, you do something at some point, whatever is to the right is brought down as it is. Then there is some simple rule to fix whatever is to the left. The swaras left out are placed in the original order to the left. So, this rule of Sharangadeva is indeed applicable to any prastara meaning any permutation of a n ordered object. So, let us look at this prastara four objects, sarigama. So, what is Sharangadeva saying? From the left you start looking, whenever the swaras appear in an ascending order. So, here at sari itself, it is appearing in an ascending order. Before re, put down the lowest of the swaras, uh, highest of the swaras below re here. So, below re you put this sa, bring down this guy and ma as it is and remaining swaras are put in ascending order to the left. So, second row risa gamma is simple. Next, risa gamma, how to go to sagarima from risa gamma. So, risa gamma, the ascending order is happening in saga, risa is descending, saga is ascending. So, below this g, I have to put the largest of this, highest of this that is re. I bring down the one to the right as it is. And in the left, whatever is left out, re and ma have already been finished. So, sa and ga have to be put in the natural order. So, that is sagarima next row. From sagarima, so saga itself is in natural ascending order. So, below ga put this sa, bring down the re and ma, whatever is left out ga is put to the left. Next row, ga sa rima. So, sa re is in the ascending order, below re put the 
highest below re in the left that is sa, bring down the ma as it is, whatever is left out sama is here, riga have to be filled in here. Riga sama, so riga is in ascending order, below the ga put the re, sama are brought down from the above, what is left out ga is placed to the left. Ga ri sama, so ga ri sa is all in descending, only sama is ascending, so before the ma put the highest that is below ma which lies to the left that is ga. So, before the ma put the ga, there is nothing else on the right to be brought down. The remaining swaras have to be put in the ascending order sa ri ma ga. So, like this you go on. So, you can take any line ga ri ma sa, supposing what is the next line? What is the next line? <coughs> ascending order ri to ma is ascending. So, highest before the ma is ga is to be brought down the sa is to be left as it is, ga and sa are over, ri and ga are only remaining, the next row is, uh, I am sorry, ga, ga and ri and ma are what is le left out. So, rima ga sa is the next row. Rima is in ascending order, before the ma whatever is to the left which is lower than ma should be brought are, ga and sa are as they are. So, this next row is mari ga sa. Next row. Ma ri, ri ga is in ascending order, before the ga put the ri, sa is to be brought down as it is, S -s -s ga and ma are what is left out. So, like that it, from any point you can start, follow Sharnga Deva's rule and keep going down. So, this is the rule, <coughs> this can be applied to any permutation of n objects which have a natural order amongst them. So, you instead of sarigama you could have done 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, put the 1 there, 3, 4, 2 is left, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3 is ascending, put the 2 there, bring down, 1, 3. So, like that you can go on. So, any permutation of any n object which have a natural order and in fact, the same rule even applies when you have repetitions. Sasariri gaga, you can do a prastara of that, obviously that will not be n factorial that will be n factorial by n 1 factorial, n 2 factorial number of identical object. So, that is called listing of multi sets, those are sets which uh, where objects can repeat and they are ordered. So, even that can be done by the same rule of Sharangadeva. In fact, later on uh, if we have time while discussing Ganita Kaumodhi of Narayan Pandita, he has explicitly considered the prastara of permutations with repetitions we will do. So, that is the rule of prastara, that is you order all the kutatanas of the swaras in the form of a, a mare going from 1 till the n factorial point. <coughs> and as you can see in this, the first 6 end with a ma, the next 6 end with a ga and the next 6 end with a ri and the last 6 end with a sa. And what is 6? Six? 6 is the factorial below 4, that is 3 factorial. And inside each of those blocks you will see, they will group under 2 factorial, inside that they will group under 1 factorial. So, the factorial numbers naturally appear in the construction of this prastara. And so, just as the binary powers were natural in the syllabic meter prastara, the Fibonacci or the Virahanka numbers were the natural units in the Matravrata prastara the factorials of integers or the natural units which will discuss, which will be used in discussing the prastara of kutatanas. <coughs> so, let us just understand the rule of kramam nyasya swaras thapyaha, put the first row in which the swaras are all in the purva purvaha paradadhaha, sached upari tat purvaha. So, from left if there is a one going up, put the one below that, below that, parastu uparivartinaha, bring down all the things to the right as they are, mula krama kramat prishthe sheshaha, the other swaras which are left out are put in the natural order to the left. So, the complete rule of prastara is clearly encoded in this beautiful verse. <coughs> now, obviously having constructed the prastara, we have to do the standard problems of given a row number what is the permutation that appears, what is the tana that appears in that row. Given a tana or a permutation, 
in which row of the prastara does that appear. So, that is the next thing. So, incidentally some history of this. So, this way of ordering uh, the permutations is what is called the colex ordering in today. Now, there is a simple ordering called the lexicographic ordering today. So, you can start with 1, 2, 3, 4. What would be the next thing in the lexicographic ordering? U 1, 2, 4, 3, right? Then 1, 3, 2, 4. So, like that it goes. From the left, you keep on choosing the lowest one, only in the end, you alter the things in the natural order. So, that way of ordering things is called the lexicographic ordering. What Shangadeva has done is a mirror image of the inversion of the lexicographic ordering, that is why it is called the colex ordering, in, uh, mirror image of colex ordering. So, if you take the last one, the mirror image of this is Sarigama. You, you take the next one, the mirror image of this is Sarimaga you take the third one sagarima so as you can see the when you read the prastara from the bottom the mirror image is the same as the what is called the lexicographic ordering so shargadeva's prescription for permutation generation is what is called the mirror image of the colexicographic ordering of permutations in fact in 16th 17th century lots of books were written on trying to list all permutations of say eight objects or nine objects and invariably there would be errors found in the books because they did not have a systematic algorithm for writing down all the permutations and uh, I think some Frenchman discovered one algorithm around late 18th century that is the sort of beginning of the subject in Europe. So, now what is the way in which Shangadeva discusses Nashta and Uddishta? So, as I said, Nashta and Uddishta is given the row number, find out the Tana, that is Nashta. Uddishta is given the <coughs> Tana, find out the row in which it appears. And for that, Shangadeva uses something called the Khande Meru. Let us not read the words, but just look at the Meru and understand. The first row is all 1 and 0, 0, 0. Second row is all the factorials, leaving out the first column 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial. 5 factorial, 6 factorial. Third row, leave out two columns, twice the 2 factorial, twice the 3 factorial, twice the 4 factorial. Next row is 3 times the factorial, 4 times the factorial, 5 times the factorial. So, that is the construction of the Khanda Meru of Shangadeva. It is like just a you are going to divide these things by factorials. So, it is like just like a multiplication table of factorials with which you will grade the things and identify the uh, prastara, meaning do the nashta and do the shta. The mathematical operation, just as in the case of Varnavrutta, uh, the idea the you went on dividing by 2, that was the way you were doing the nashta and do the shta. Here, you go on dividing by factorials and instead of doing the division, you use this Khande Meru. <coughs> we will again not read the thing, but take an example and understand how the <coughs> Uddishta problem is to be done. To find the row of the Tana Masa Riga in the Prastara of Sarigama. So, this is a Uddishta problem. For Sarigama, you first write down your Khande Meru like this Sarigama 1000 factorials, twice the factorials. 3 times the factorial. Then what do you do? Look up the last swara in the end and then identify in the reverse order where it stands among Sarigama. So, among Sarigama, Ga is the second in the reverse order. So, from the top you mark the second row. Then Ga is over, Masari is all that is left. So, you take Ri. Now, identify amongst the left out swaras that is Sarima, what is the position of Ri in the reverse order. 
So, Sarima Maturi Ri is the second in the reverse order amongst the remaining Sarima. So, again mark the second column in the next uh, second row in the next column. Then what is left? Sari. So, what is Ri in the reverse order among Sari? It is for it is <coughs> I am sorry, Masariga is what we are doing. So, what is left is minds. Huh? So, what is uh, in the reverse order among Sama? That is the second. So, again the second row, whatever is left is in the first row. So, I have marked these four numbers, add all of them 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 10. That is the row of Masariga in the Masariga is in the 10th row of the Prasthara. So, using Khandameru. So, we can take another example. <coughs> let us keep the Khandameru. So, let us take some other thing. <coughs> Garimasa. So, what is the <coughs> row of this in the Prastara of Sarigama? <coughs> so, Sa <coughs> is the fourth among Sarigama. So, you have to identify 1, 2, 3, 4. You have to take the 8, oh, it will not come that way. So, you have to take this 18. So, this will be 18 plus <coughs> ma amongst rigama ma is the first so you will just get a zero in the second entry ma is the first in the reverse then you have ga ri ri amongst ri and ga ri is the second from the top therefore you have to take the second row in the next column that is one so, this was the fourth, this was the first, this was the second and this will be whatever is left that is just this one here. So, this is what you have. So, you should obtain this in the twentieth row of the prastara. Let us go and see. Gari Masa is indeed the twentieth row. So, this is the method of doing Uddishta with the Khandameru and Khandameru is essentially a device for dividing the number by factorials and identifying where it appears. <coughs> now, Nashta, again we will do it with an example. <coughs> so, find out the 18th Tana in the Prasthara of Sarigama. So, what do you do? The rule is as follows. In the 14th, in the last column, identify the number below the number you are looking for. So, the number below 18 is 12. Then, subtract that 12 from 18, you are left with 6. Then, in the next column, look for the number below 6, that is 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Take this 2. In the next column, look for the number below 2, that is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, this 1. So, you have obtained these 4 numbers. From these 4 numbers, how do you identify the prasthara, the uh, permutation? So, what do you do? Same thing, same interpretation, right? This is the third row. So, in Sarigama, the last entry of the permutation is the third in the reverse order from, from the end. So, that has to be ri. Among Sarigama, maga ri. Ri is the third in the reverse order from the end, this is the third row that is coming. So, I identify the re. Next, this is also third. So, among sagama, sa is the third. So, next is sa. So, you have identified re, then you have identified sa. Then you have the second row here marked. So, amongst what is left? We have finished with re and sa. So, only uh, ga and ma are left. So, what is the second in the reverse order amongst ga and ma? That is ga. And therefore, you have the third entry taken ga, what is left out is ma. So, we can do one more example. <coughs> so, find out say the ninth row of prasthara.
So, what you will get in the last column you will get 6 right. So, last column Just one more row. So, you obtain this 6, 9 minus 6 is 3. So, in the next column, you are again obtaining this 2, which is just below that 3. This 6 is just below the 9. <coughs> then, <coughs> 3 minus 2 is 1, and this 0 is just below that 1, and this one has to be used. So, <coughs> The last entry of the permutation is the second in reverse order in Sarigama that is Ga and what is left Sarima amongst them again the second <coughs> that is Ri and what is left Sama amongst them the first is the reverse order that is Ma. So, your permutation should be Sama Riga let us see whether that is indeed that is the ninth row of the Chargadevas prastava. So, the Nashta and Uddhishta are just done from the Khandameru. <coughs> that is more or less it because there is no Laga Kriya. Why there is no Laga Kriya? Because every Tana has all the elements and only once and therefore, there is nothing like how many times any particular element appears, all elements appear once and only once in the permutation. So, there is no further Laga Kriya, but just all this that the Kanda Meru and whatever we have done is essentially based upon a very beautiful representation of numbers. So, I will just tell it to you in uh, very briefly and we will proceed. <coughs> so, in both the Nashta and Uddhishta examples that I had given, the number 10 was broken down into 1 plus 1 plus 2 into 6, the number 18 was broken down into 1 plus 1 into 4 into 12, that is each number is broken down into a sum of multiples of factorials. And this is a, a behind both the Nashta and Uddhishta process and this can be generalized into a, a statement which is actually implicit in the construction of the Khanda Meru and in the Nashta and Uddhishta process that every integer can be uniquely represented in the form d naught times 0 factorial, 0 factorial is taken to be 1, <coughs> d 1 into 1 factorial, d 2 into 2 factorial, etcetera, d n minus 1 into n minus 1 factorial, where d i's are numbers less than or equal to i, d i is less than or equal to i, it can be 0, d naught is always 1. So, this kind of a re unique representation exists and that gives a one to one map between the numbers, the rows and the metrical the, the permutations. So, that is at the heart of Nashta and Buddhista. In particular, you have this very beautiful relation n factorial is 1 into 0 factorial plus 1 into 1 factorial, 2 into 2 factorial etcetera. Okay. So, we are half done, actually we are done with the simpler form of Prastara that Shangadeva did. He all, does all this in about 10, 12 verses or something like that. And incidentally, what is Sankhya for these prastaras? It is just n factorial, <coughs> right. Tana prastara is indeed something which is much more fascinating, much more complex. And the theory that uh, Sharangadeva has given, in fact, uh, is more general than even what later people could do. <coughs> the chapter 5 of Sangeet Ratnakara is Tala Dhyaya it has 409 verses. The first 311 verses discuss what are known as Marga Talas uh, and about 120 Deshi Talas. At the end of all this, Sharangadeva says, no, no, the number of Talas are innumerable and all that. So, I will tell you some mathematics that you can do with them, which will give you an idea of the kind of variety of Talas that are possible. And so, he starts with the, the discussion of Prastara, Nashta, Uddhishta and he does 
various other things. <coughs> the units of Tala that Shangadeva is considering are four and that is what is uh, interesting and that is somewhat different from the way the Tala units are in vogue today. The units he is considering the Talangas, he is considering four Talangas, Dhruta, Laghu, Guru, Pluta. These are the four Talangas that Shangadeva is considering. He is giving them actually that temporal measure of half, <coughs> 1, 2 and 3. So, if we put it down in integers, instead of this, this is in the ratio 1 is to 4 is to 6. So, there are 4 Tala units that Shangadeva is considering, Dhruta, Laghu, Guru and Pluta. Now, in today's music, we know there are 3 units in the what are called the Sula, the Sapta Talas, which are in vogue in Carnatic music since the time of Purandara Dasa. There is something called the Anudruta, there is Druta, then there is Laghu. And the Sula, the Sapta Talas are made out of these three components. And these Laghus can be of five varieties, right? Triputa, Chaturashra, Khanda, Mishra, and Sankirna. Dhruta is of two units. This can be of units 3, 4, 5, 7 and 9 and this is of unit 1. So, these are the Tala units currently in vogue in the Carnatic music as it is practiced. Uh, so, but these are the units that Shangadeva is considering <coughs> and later on it is said that there are many uh, manuscripts and uh, discussions of uh, these kinds of with these kinds of units also in uh, late 18th, 19th century, there are supposedly many families of Mrazangam players and musicians who have written secrets of Prastara for their children and for their uh, shishyas in small, small monographs, but many of them are supposed to be around and uh, most of them are not. There is one due to the Tachur brothers, etcetera. So, they have not been still been studied, but the Shangadeva has given a complete discussion with these four units. Of course, in the olden times, even in Shangadeva's time, there used to be another unit called Kakapada. That was this Kakapada is also in vogue, I mean till recently in complicated talas known as Sharabhanandana, Simhanandana and all that. So, these kind of units are also used in current use. Okay. So, now let us go along with Shangadeva people who want to update his theory for current Tala units are welcome to make their attempt. There is Professor Akella Mallikarjuna Sharma in Hyderabad who has written quite a few articles and monographs on this subject. <coughs> he is a violinist. Okay. So, now the thing that is done is indeed a generalization of the matra vritta. What is done is? a total Tala amount of say 15 units. How many Tala forums can be there made up of DLGP, which will give you a total of 15. So, this is similar to the Matra Vritta Prastara, where the, you had only just the Lagu and Guru with 1 and 2. So, to the 1 and 2, which now think we will call them 2 and 4, you are adding a 1 and 6 and you are en enlarging the problem of partitions. These are ordered partitions of numbers uh, made out of this, where repetitions are also allowed. So, the theory of Tala Prastara is indeed a generalization of the theory of the Matra Vritta Prastara. Now, in mathematics literature in India, in Ganita Kaumudi, Narayana Pandita did consider, he, he tried to make a generalization, Narayana Pandita tries to make a generalization of all the earlier discussions into a larger mathematical framework. So, he generalizes Pingala's Varna Vritta Prastara, which is binary representation into 
a representation in for an arbitrary radix for an arbitrary base. Similarly, he generalized the Matravrata Prastara of uh, which was in vogue to considering uh, any number of units say LGP Lagu, Guru and Pluta with values 1, 2, 3 or with values 1, 2, 3, 4 or with values up to 1, 2, 3 up to Q all the values appearing. But that does not include the peculiar kind of formulation the Shargadeva has made where the units are 1, 2, 4 and 6. So, what theory Narayana has given? So, Shargadeva's theory is indeed somewhat more complex and general. This appears in a music book about 150 years earlier or 100 years earlier than Narayana Pandita, but this is indeed more general than at least Narayana generalization does not include this. <coughs> okay. So, now the prastara of these talas. So, if you have a dhruta only that is one dhruta prastara just that is all. Next is <coughs> lagu that will just have two right two dhruta prastara this can be called one dhruta prastara meaning one unit of time in the dhruta unit two units of time. <coughs> so, first you write a lagu then you can write two. Uh, so, what about the three dhrita prastara? It can be like this, right? So, this will be the three dhrita prastara. I have not written them down, okay. <laughs> so, good, I am writing them down on the board. So, this will be a two dhrita prastara. <coughs> So, this will be a three dhrita prastara. So, once you have four dhritas, a guru is the starting point LL. So, then below the D there will be an L, you are right. So, then this will be DDL, then there will be a DDD, D, D, D. this is all. This will be the four dhrita prastara. So, the rule is last row of the prastara is dhritas only. First row, depending on the number of units, put as many plutas. So, the basic units are D is 1, L is 2, G is 4, P is 6. Remember that. <coughs> so, in the first row, put as many plutas as possible, follow that by as many gurus as possible, follow that by as many Ls as possible, follow it by Ds. That is the first row. The last row will have only Ds. <coughs> Then, <coughs> same way to go from any row to the next row, start from the left. Whenever a non D element appears first, below that, write the highest element that can be written below that. If you see a P, write a G below that. If you see a G, write an L below that. If you see a L, write a D below that. <coughs> then, bring down the elements to the right as they are. Then on the left again fill up starting from P's if possible then G's then L's then D's to fill in the total number of units that for which you are writing the prastara. So, this is the same rule. So, we can read the words of Shangadeva. Nyasya alpam adhyat mahato adhastat shesham yathopari above the mahato above the greater one Adhyata from the beginning from the left, wherever there is a greater one. Nyasya alpam, put the next one below that. Shesham yathopari, the ones to the right have to be brought down as they are. Pragune vama samsthastu sambhave mahatoliket. So, here from in the left, whatever big things you can write, you write. Alpana sambhave tala purtiyai bhuyo apyayam vidhi. Keep filling it up till the number of tala, kala pramana are filled up. So, let us take the sixth, sixth dhruta prastara. <coughs> sixth dhruta is pluta. So, below that right pluta, right a guru, on the left lagu. From the left, below the lagu, right a dhruta. Bring down the guru as it is. You need to make up six. So, put a D. Again, start looking from the left. Below the G, you have to write an L. 
So, to fill up 6, a g is possible. So, write that. Again, from the left, below this g, you have to write an l. Bring down the l as it is. An l is possible. So, l, l, l. Now, below this l, write the d. Bring down these two l's as they are. In the left, write the d. Below this l, write the d. Bring down this l. Here, three matras are available. So, write an l first, then a d. Like that, you go on. So, I have written it both in terms of P, A, G, L and in terms of numbers 1, 2, 4 and 6. So, this has 19. Now, you can straight away see this has one row with ending with P, two rows ending with G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows ending with an L and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 30, I think it is what, uh, 10 rows ending with a D. And you can straight away guess what is going to appear <coughs> that in the prastara of n kala pramanas that you are doing, you first take <coughs> the prastara of n minus 6 kala pramana, put a p in the end for all of them, right. In the prastara of value n tala total duration n, you first start with <coughs> prastara of tala of length or tala of duration n minus 6. To that, you add a pluta immediately that will make a n. Then below that, you take a prastara of units n minus 4. To that, you put a guru on the right. Then again, you have finished your n. Next, you do <coughs> prastara of n minus 2 units and to them in the last row you put a lagu and finally, you do prastara of n minus 1 units in the end put a dhrita. So, the recurrence relation for the number of rows in the prastara is S n is S n minus 1 plus S n minus 2 plus S n minus 4 plus S n minus 6. The prastara of n tala units is constructed. So, you can see this here. <coughs> In the 6 dhruta prastara, <coughs> there is above 6, it is easy because it is below 6, there will be some complications because one or other of them may not exist. So, it is best to see it in the 7 dhruta prastara. In 7 dhruta prastara, you can see 7 minus 6 is 1. There is one row which ends with a pluta. 7 minus 4 is 3. And the prastara of 3 I have already written. It has 3 rows only. So, there are 3 rows which end with a g. In fact, this is dlld ddd is what I have written here. You write that and put a g to the right. And this is S1, uh, this is the prastara 1 tala unit which we wrote first. You put a p on the right. <coughs> Next, Sn minus 2, that is 5. Unfortunately, we did not write down the 5. We can write it down. So, what will 5 units look like? You start with a g with a d on the left, right. So, now you have to put an l there, an l d will appear below the L, take a D, bring down the L as it is, an L can come here. No, <laughs> here a D G will appear. So, like that it will go on. <laughs> we will have to write few more rows. <laughs> so, you can see it here, D G all these things are having L at the end, D G, D L L, L D L, D D D L, G D, I have come up to that point, you can go on. <laughs> so, you put all that and put a L below. This is prastara of length 5 to which you put an L below, L to the right. So, it will become prastara of 7. And finally, this is prastara of 6 units which was done here, this 19 rows. You take these 19 rows and put a d on the right. So, that will give you a prastara of 7 units. 
So, in Tara Prastara, the rule is <coughs> the Tara Prastara of n Tara units is made up of first n minus 6 Tara unit Prastara with a p on the right, n minus 4 uh, unit Tara Prastara with a g on the right, n minus 2 Tara Prastara with an l on the right, n minus 1 Tara Prastara with a d on the right, and therefore the number of rows in the Prastara is S n is equal to S n minus 1. So, you can now write down. So, this is what Shangadeva is saying. Ekad vyankau kraman yasya yunji tantyam puratanehi dvitiya turya shishtam kaihi abhave turya shishtayo. So, basically he is saying dvitiya is the second previous, turya is the fourth previous, shishta is the sixth previous. So, abhave turya shishtayo, I think till 1 to 5 meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you will have 6 is absent here, 4 is absent here. So, there you use the third and the fifth. Likhet dakshina samsthaivam ankashredi vidhiyate yad anka yogat antyonko labdaha taihi antata kramat bhedaha dhritanta lagvanta gurvantashta plutanta kaha. The four numbers of which the given number is a sum are indeed those prastaras which are ending in Dhruta, Lagu, Guru and Pluta. So, that is what he is saying and so these numbers can now be tabulated. So, this is the recurrence relation. So, we can call these numbers as Shargadeva sequence of numbers. <coughs> so, the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 6, 10, 19, 33, 60. So, this 60 here is equal to 33 plus this is S n minus 1 plus 19 S n minus 2 plus 6 S n minus 4 plus 2 S n minus 6. Similarly, this 106 is 60 plus 33 plus 10 plus 3. So, like that each one is composed. This is all generalized Virahanka sequence. So, this is the Shangadeva sequence. Now, the rest is doing all complicated calculations of Nashta and Uddishta with this sequence. So, I will just give you a glimpse of how it is. We will not be able to go into the details of it. We are uh, already running little bit short of time on this. So, I will just tell you how the Uddishta is to be done. That will give you, this is the generalization of the way Uddishta is done for the Matra Vrittas. What did we do for Matra Vrittas? We said write the Virahanka numbers for a guru write one above and one below, for lagus write one above, sum the numbers above the gurus that is the uh, Uddishta process for the matra vritta. Now, what is the Uddishta process for the tala? So, let us take some problem. <coughs> now, I think I have enough examples put in here. So, what do you do? Uh, write one Sankhyanka above D, 2 above L, 4 above a G and 6 above a P. Sum the following Sankhyankas. Later on we will see these Sankhyankas which are summed are called the Patita Sankhyankas. The first Sankhyanka above each L, the second and third Sankhyankas above each G, second, fourth and fifth Sankhyankas above each P. So, let us see. The row number of the Tala forum is obtained by subtracting the above sum from S n. So, to find the row number of L D L L in 7 Dritta Prastara. So, first write L D L L, write 2 Sankhyankas above L, 1 above D, 2 above L, 2 above L. Nothing above the D is to be summed, the first number above the L is to be summed. So, 1 plus 6 plus 19 that is 26, 33 minus 26 is 7. So, L D L L is 7th row in 7 Dritta Prastara, L D L L. L D L L is 7th row in 7th Rita Prasad. Another example G D L. Write 4 Sankhyankas 1, 2, 3, 6, 10, 19, 33, these are the Sankhyankas. So, write 4 Sankhyankas above G, 1 above D, 2 above L. Sum the second and third above G and the first above L, that is what it says. First Sankhyanka above each L, second and third Sankhyankas above each G and second, fourth and fifth Sankhyankas about each P. So, second and third about G, 
first above L. So, you get 24, 33 minus 24 is 9, G D L is ninth row of the seven rita plus tara. Last example, P D. So, again above the pluta write 6 sankhyankas 1, 2, 3, 6, 10, 19. Above the dhrita write 1 sankhyanka, sum the second, fourth and fifth above the p. So, that is 18, 33 minus 18 is 15. So, 15th row of 7 dhrita prastara should be p d. So, that is the p d that we have seen. So, the reverse will be the same numbers will come as patita sankhyas. Uh, what we did in matra vritta was start subtracting if you want to find out the 8th row in the 7 dhrita prastara subtract 8 from 33 you get 25 then write the sankhyankas see which can be subtracted from 25 19 can be subtracted so 25 minus 19 is 6 and then 6 can be subtracted 6 minus 6 is 0 so this 19 and 6 are patita sankhyankas this 33 10 and 3 2 1 are apatita sankhyankas and then you have this what is called the template with which you com compare. If you have an A, it is Dhrita. If you have an AP, it is a Lagu. If you have an APPA, it is a Guru. If you have an APPA, PA, it is a Pluta. Of course, that followed by Apatita. So, you use that template, immediately you will get DDDL. So, it is all very nicely worked out in the mathematics in terms of the Sharnadeva Sankhyas, the idea of Patita Sankhyankas. This is a generalization of what was done in the Matra Vrittas. Another example, 28th Tala Forum in 7 Dhrita Prastara, 33 minus 28 is 5, only 3 can be subtracted from 5, 5 minus 3 is 2, next 2 can be subtracted. So, only 3 and 2 are Patita Sankhyankas, rest are all Apatita. So, you have an A, you have an A, P, P, A, that is the sign of a Guru the rest are all dhritas. So, the tala forum is a g d d d. Finally, Shangadeva also constructs, he constructs a lagu meru, a dhrita meru, a pluta meru and a guru meru because given a tala forum, given say 15 matra, uh, 15 dhrita prastara, how many tala forums are there with one pluta, two pluta, three pluta etcetera, how many tala forums are there with one dhruta, two dhruta etcetera, one guru, two guru. Now, you can even ask more complicated questions, two gurus and one dhrita, because you have four elements now, earlier you are only having two elements, so only one choice was made. So, all these are there, they are very, this entire prastara section of Sangeeta Ratnakara runs to about 100 verses, uh, he constructs something called Samyoga Meru, Dhrita Meru, Lagu Meru, Guru Meru, these are the kind of uh, recursion relations which are at the basis of these Merus. So, in all it is a very nice mathematical exercise. So, ultimately in all this kind of combinatorics that we discuss, what is the message? So, in any enumeration, any objects which can be enumerated, you have first a prastara, an array and then once you have an array, you can ask for questions like row number and what is the object that is sitting in that row number, you want an association, then you have something called lagakriya, how many rows? satisfy a particular property. So, these were the mathematical questions that Pingala identified, but below this there is a mathematical uh, issue also, because once you have to identify a row number with a forum a, and a forum with a row number, you will immediately see with a number a certain representation will immediately be associated. So, in Pingala's Varnamrita uh, Prasthara, we had every number written as a sum of 2 to the power various powers of 2. In Matra Vritta Prastara, you saw every number was written as a sum of Virahanka numbers or the so called Fibonacci numbers. In Tana Prastara, you saw every number was represented in terms of factorials, and in Tala Prastara, every number can be written as a sum of what I showed just now as the Shangadeva numbers. Later on, we will discuss. Prastara of combinations, prastara of permutations has been given by Sharangadeva, prastara of combinations can also be done, Narayana Pandita does that in Ganita Kaumudi, that gives you a representation of all numbers in terms of binomial coefficient. So, once we have this array and associating numbers with forms, immediately you will get a mathematical formulation uh, relating natural numbers 
with a certain representations involving the sankhyankas of that array and this is at the bottom of all this uh, mathematics that uh, we have discussed. Thank you very much.